It was a busy Tuesday morning at the Grand Imperial Hotel in downtown San Francisco. Chef Jane was rushing around the immaculate stainless steel kitchen. Her long brown hair pulled back in a messy bun as she prepared for the lunch service. She had been working as a cook at the prestigious five-star hotel for over three years now, having worked her way up from prep cook after graduating culinary school. At 10.30 a.m., just as Jane was instructing her team on the day's specials, the head chef called a sudden staff meeting. To everyone's surprise, he announced that upper management had decided all kitchen staff must have short professional hairstyles from now on. The new policy cited health codes and safety concerns around long hair and food preparation. Jane felt shocked and distressed when the new hair policy was suddenly announced. She had always taken pride in her clean and professional appearance as part of working in such a fine five-star establishment, but her long, flowing locks were also an expression of her creativity and identity as a chef. Mustering her courage, Jane firmly told the head chef and restaurant manager, I apologize, but I am unwilling to cut my hair in order to comply with this new policy. My hair length does not interfere with my ability to cook safely and hygienically, and it is an important part of who I am as a creative chef. When Jane refused to comply with the new short hair policy, the head chef slammed his hand down on the table in frustration. This is non-negotiable, he exclaimed sharply. The hotel management has decided that long hair poses too much risk for contamination in the kitchen. You'll have to cut your hair or leave. Stunned by his harsh tone, Jane reiterated that her neatly tied back hair had never caused issues before. With all due respect, chef, I believe I can function perfectly well as a creative five-star chef while expressing my personal style, she countered. The manager, however, sided with the chef. Rules are rules, Jane. You agreed to our grooming standards when hired, he said sternly. We're asking all kitchen staff to get pixie cuts by Monday. That's final. Jane felt like she had been punched in the gut when the manager declared, anyone who doesn't get their hair chopped into an undercut pixie style by tomorrow morning will be severely fired. She desperately needed her job at the prestigious hotel. It allowed her to pursue her creative culinary dreams and passion for excellence while paying the bills but the non-negotiable demand to lop off her long locks left Jane reeling. Jane left the meeting feeling devastated. Jane left work feeling devastated and went home, agonizing over whether to cut her hair or lose her job. She felt her long locks were core to her identity, but she desperately needed the income. After an anguished night tossing and turning over whether to cut her hair or lose her job, Jane finally fell into a restless sleep as the morning sun started rising. In her dreams, Jane was back in the gleaming stainless steel kitchen of the Grand Imperial Hotel, whipping up creative dishes for guests. But suddenly, the head chef grabbed a pair of scissors and advanced on Jane, shouting that her long hair must be cut off. Jane woke up with a start, heart pounding. She realized cutting her long locks felt like losing a vital piece of herself, yet she desperately needed this job and income. Wrestling with inner turmoil, Jane eventually dozed off again out of emotional exhaustion. When she awoke a couple hours later, she came to the difficult decision that she had to try saving her position, even if it meant chopping off her beloved long hair. Dragging herself still bleary-eyed from lack of sleep to the bathroom, Jane stared sadly at the reflection of her long brown locks. She realized this might be the last chance to see her hair so long and flowing free. With dread filling her entire body, Jane sat down at her laptop at the small desk in her modest apartment bedroom. She pulled up search results for hair salons nearby. Scanning the various barbershops that popped up, she felt nauseous knowing she was about to make an appointment to butcher her long, beautiful hair. Hands trembling, Jane clicked on the website for a well-reviewed but affordable downtown salon. She booked the first available stylist for the following morning at 10 a.m. 
Entering the notes section, Jane typed an explanation that she needed her currently mid-back length curly brown haircut extremely short into a tapered pixie style undercut. Seeing the appointment sealed in black and white on the screen, Jane put her head in her hands. Tears spilled down her face as the reality set in that tomorrow, her locks would be shorn off to comply with the hotel's demand. That night, Jane agonized over what outfit to wear, wanting to somehow mentally prepare herself. She finally settled on a black dress as if attending a funeral for her lost hair. The next morning, Jane barely touched her breakfast, feeling too anxious and sad. Jane walked the few blocks from her apartment to the nearby city bus stop. She felt almost numb, still in disbelief that she was about to have her gorgeous long hair chopped off. When the bus arrived crammed full with the morning commuter rush, Jane self-consciously boarded and glanced around. She wondered if the other passengers could sense her anguish underneath her blank expression. Finding a small bit of space to stand gripping an overhead railing, Jane felt the bus lurch into motion. At each stop, more people pushed their way on, jostling Jane as she tensely clutched her purse strap. Passing familiar landmarks out the smudged bus windows, Jane realized her stop downtown was coming up shortly. Her stomach flipped with anxiety, knowing the barbershop was now less than 10 minutes away. Stepping off the bus into the swarming downtown streets, thick with business people, Jane felt lightheaded. She still couldn't believe she would soon be another woman with a severe pixie undercut hairstyle just to keep her job. Walking the bustling urban sidewalks, Jane soon arrived at the modest street-level barbershop. Through the windows, she could see a few men already seated in heavy black leather chairs as barbers buzzed their hair. Jane paused outside the old-fashioned barber shop, staring at the red and white spinning pole near the entrance. Through the big plate glass windows, she watched a middle-aged man having his hair trimmed with sharp scissors. Taking a deep, shaky breath, Jane pulled open the heavy door. The lively buzz of clippers and scent of shaving cream overwhelmed her senses as she stepped inside. Jane approached the front counter where an elderly barber in a white smock was tidying hair products. I have a 10 o'clock appointment for a pixie cut, Jane managed to say, her voice small. The barber peered over his little round glasses and smiled, gestured to an empty chair. Have a seat, dear. Sarah will be right with you, he said warmly. Jane forced her wooden legs to carry her over. Sinking into the leather chair facing the large mirror, Jane didn't recognize herself. Just then, a petite young woman with a nose ring and edgy short hairstyle came over. You must be Jane, she said, popping the cape around Jane's neck. So we're going for a real change today, huh? Show me a photo of this cute pixie cut you want. With a trembling hand, Jane pulled out her phone to the image. The perky stylist grinned. Oh! How brave! We're going to buzz off all this pretty hair into next week. Let's do this. Hand shaking, Jane showed the stylist the photo of the severe undercut pixie style. But before taking the clippers, the stylist paused and looked Jane in the eyes in the mirror. Hey, are you sure you want to cut off all your pretty hair? You seem really upset. Did someone order you to get it all chopped off? The stylist asked gently. Jane was startled when the kind stylist questioned why she was cutting off her long, pretty hair. Sighing, Jane explained how the Grand Imperial Hotel suddenly demanded all women kitchen staff get short, masculine cuts. The stylist shook her head in disbelief. The Grand Imperial? That fancy hotel made you chop off your locks? She asked indignantly. Jane nodded saying it was apparently for health codes in the kitchen. The stylist shook her head, looking outraged when Jane explained the Grand Imperial Hotel was forcing employees to cut their hair short. When Jane mentioned vague health codes, the barber's eyes flashed. She clearly didn't believe that was the real reason. Without saying another word, the stylist took the buzzing clippers firmly in hand. Jane opened her mouth but didn't get a chance to speak before the clippers touched her head. 
Starting at Jane's forehead, the barber ruthlessly drove the clippers back across Jane's scalp, shearing off a wide swath of long brunette locks. Shocked at the barber's sudden forcefulness and watching her hair tumbled to the floor, Jane froze for a few seconds as tears started welling in her eyes. The determined stylist continued steadily cutting the buzzing clippers back and forth across Jane's head with expert dexterity. More hair rained down as she worked wordlessly and brusquely. Unsettled by the barber's swift, impersonal detachment, tears now spilled down Jane's cheeks. She desperately continued trying to explain that this cut felt wrong and traumatic. Unsettled by the barber's cold swiftness shaving off her hair, Jane couldn't stop tears spilling down her cheeks. She tried explaining again this cut felt deeply wrong, but the aloof stylist kept clipping mechanically, hair falling in clumps. Suddenly, Jane found her voice. No, stop, please. I don't want this, she screamed. The barber rolled her eyes with indignance. Hey, calm down and be quiet, she scolded, continuing to drive the angry, buzzing shears rapidly across Jane's increasingly bare scalp. Please, you have to stop and listen, Jane begged hysterically. Despite Jane's hysterical pleas for the barber to stop, she shouted coldly, You asked for this, so you're getting it. Then she forcefully finished shearing every last lock off Jane's head. Jane squeezed her eyes shut in despair as the last of her hair tumbled to the hard tile floor. The now completely bald young woman could hear the buzzers finally click off sharply. Anger still evident on her face, the stylist roughly untied and pulled off the nylon cutting cape from around Jane's slumped shoulders. As Jane's freshly shorn scalp was cruelly exposed to the air, the barber slapped her hand firmly down on the armrest. Get up, we're done here, she ordered brusquely. Totally humiliated with her newly bald head, Jane slowly rose on wobbly legs while choking back sobs. She turned to flee the nightmarish shop, but the stern stylist grabbed Jane's elbow, forcing her to make eye contact in the mirror. Don't you dare complain I was too strict next time someone asks for your review, she spat severely. Still reeling from the icy stylist's harsh words, Jane paid the receptionist at the front counter in a daze. She averted her eyes from the other clients gawking at her brutally shorn head. Rushing out onto the busy city sidewalk, the world felt entirely different to newly bald Jane. The sunlight and city noises overwhelmed her senses after the traumatic events inside the barber shop. Wanting to hide away and process what just happened, Jane considered going straight home. But an urge arose to show her superiors at the hotel what their strict mandate had done. Setting her jaw firmly, Jane strode with purpose towards the closest bus stop. The bus lumbered up shortly, and Jane self-consciously took a seat, acutely aware of her exposed scalp. Arriving downtown near the glitzy Grand Imperial Hotel, Jane gathered her courage and walked briskly inside the polished marble lobby. Newly shorn, Jane approached the front desk. I need to see the general manager. It's urgent, she stated firmly to the slack-jawed receptionist. Soon, Jane was escorted to the executive offices upstairs. The imposing manager appeared, raising his eyebrows in surprise when he recognized his defiant employee now standing before him utterly bald. But then a smug, satisfied smile crossed the manager's face. He slowly walked around Jane, examining her exposed, pale head. Well now, this is exactly the professional image I expected of my kitchen employees, he proclaimed haughtily. Jane flushed with anger and shame. Circling back to face Jane, the domineering manager clasped his hands. This severe style will make keeping our kitchen up to standards much easier. I trust you'll maintain this very strictly now, he threatened. Jane opened her mouth to unleash her fury, but faltered. Fighting back tears of frustration, she knew defending her rights could cost her job she desperately needed.